Hey everybody, welcome back to Lightning Returns, and today we are going to redeem our plot coupon. Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. What? What? Something's different. What's different? Welcome. I can't welcome quite put my finger on it. Oh my god, you've discovered the color menu. Very good, madam. In you go. Fucking finally. It's only the single most important part of this whole game. Ah. So many hours of my life lost in that menu. And that's not even that's not even the stats and the abilities. Just the colors. Okay. There's a So Hope here has some uh really important backstory that he tells us about and it gets cut off constantly because of battle and shit yeah this was really not the best place to put the exposition dump yep definite definitely nice outfit changes though in the world can i reach it so uh yeah to make a long story short because you know he said we're going to be cutting hope off constantly here um, the last fallacy in the world is Pandemonium, and basically it makes all of the world's food and shit like that. Seems pretty important. So, basically, you know, and Lena, of course, Lightning being who she is, she's like, oh, wait, so can we go kill it? Well, that, that is, that is pretty much Lightning's thing lately. But yeah, so... Pretty much the entire reason that the world hasn't fallen to shit long ago is because there is one foul sea left, and it is making everybody in the world's food. I guess there's there's also a token farming operation going out in the wildlands. You think you can win? Let's see. But we'll get to that. Ah, uh, but fuck that! I want to talk about our outfits. Can we talk about our outfits, please? Your soul is my plan. <sighs> I'm going to talk about our outfits. or well, not our outfits, but our outfits in the game generally. So, you can buy, you know, the, the standard outfits that you get from the, from the shop, and they look like whatever they look like. But when you go to set up your schemata, that's what they're called, I'm going to use the terminology, you can recolor individual bits of them. And some of them have more outfits like others, like, than others, and like on this one, on the on the suit you can change the color of the suit and the color of the shirt and the color of the tie and i think that's about it but you can set those colors to whatever the hell you want like there's a couple of presets but if you don't like them there is an rgb slider and a hue and saturation slider and you can just go nuts and color what, whatever the hell you want you can't change you can't change adornments or weapons but if you're pro at this game, like I am, you will color coordinate your outfit with its weapons that it comes with. And that's the single most important part of this game. That's, that's why we play it, that's why we love it. I fucking love this game, okay? Anyway, Hope is giving us another helpful lore dump in which we find out that Pandemonium makes basically everything out of chaos. Of course he does. It's a, it's a magical cure-all, don't you know? So like when they when they had Falsi the on cocoon that were making food, what were they what were they making it from then? Well, I mean, the one thing we did see in thirteen was that they had this huge like hydroponic farm under in the sewers. So presumably they used real food. Question mark? What? And they just they just had all these giant nutrient vats just kicking around and a bunch of falci that existed for the sole purpose of turning it into like eatable food. But where did all the nutrients in the vat come from? Did they just materialize out of nowhere? I mean, it very well might have. I mean, that that is kind of the entire point of the falci. Has has the chaos always been? Well, no. It's like. My, my point is, now they 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 bring up, oh, it, the Falsi is making food out of chaos. And I was like, okay, so did they did they just start making the food out of chaos just now, or did they make it from something else before, or did they always make it from chaos? 
but if they were able to make it from nothing before, then why are they making it from chaos now when they could just be making it from nothing? It's like, come on, the mythology of this game makes no sense! This is the hill I'm gonna die on, guys. Of all the stupid shit in Final Fantasy XIII, this is gonna be the thing that puts me over the edge. I'm very serious about this. I hate this game, and I love this game. It's a complicated relationship, okay? Yeah, yes, thank you, Hope. We know. There's chaos. There's chaos fucking everywhere. You said that before. I mean, it might be a lot more effective if we actually saw the chaos spreading everywhere. He has just been cut- he just cut himself off like three times in the course of the last minute. It's not that I mind the concept of Hope chiming in with exposition every now and then, but They've, they've got the quantities way off. There's like some fucking Sonic Adventure 2 levels of cutting people off here. Hi, Lumina. We have missed you. See, and she means that on a figurative and a literal level. I mean, I too go to see a great performance by worrying whether or not a giant jackal man is going to come out of the floor and kill me. It's a hell of a show. Since it doesn't seem our patron is doing much locked up in his palace. What's no thinking? Maybe he's building up to a big speech about heroes. Apropos of nothing else, I really like Lumina's theme. You know, I don't mean to like throw shade at the guy, I mean they were married and all, but if you can't get over a girl in 500 years, I think the problem is you. Uh, you wouldn't know until you tried. I mean, kind of makes sense though. Humans would get a bit weird about having to think in time spans much longer than their own lifespans. It'd be weird. It'd weird you out. It's fundamentally weird. I mean, if nothing else, you can imagine, roughly, how this might work out for Snow. Anyway, we've been talking for too long. Let's kill something. This guy has a giant weak spot, and you'll never guess what it is. That's right, it's his foot. Uh-huh. Blindingly obvious, right? Yeah, that's not actually a joke, by the way. The way you stagger this guy is by hitting him... You hit him while he's standing on one foot so that he falls over and then you can punch him in the face. Yeah, I mean, in retrospect, it makes perfect sense. Because, like, you know, he... he he like reels up for a big hit and he stands on one foot, which makes his balance more precarious than it otherwise might be and you totally knock him over. But that would have been great on anything other than a Cyclops with a giant glowing red eye. Fortunately you don't really need to because about halfway through the fight he uses rage and then he becomes weak to literally everything. Well, you know, that, that helps. Deal more damage. Yeah, like, you can just totally ignore this thing, because... Okay, let's do this. Like, he's just like, yeah, you can get me with literally anything at this point. Oh, yeah, you 
you he's he's gonna he's gonna keep hitting you and you're still gonna have to be dealing with that while you're hitting and with what the hell ever so I guess you I guess you it's not that you need to you need to hit him with stuff to get damage on him it's that you need to hit him with stuff to stop him from hitting you and yeah he sure goes down like a chump once he's staggered and weak to everything you so see you actually don't even need to do that much because like, you want him to be attacking you. That's one of the easiest ways to get stagger on him. Like, when you block his clubs... Like, like I mean, it, you saw it in the fight there. I blocked, like, one of his club swings, and he immediately shot up to a red wave. Yep. This is a game with variety in how you stagger people. It works as a gambit. I like it a lot. Ugh. Anyway... Where were we? Oh yes, Lumina was wrecking shit for some reason. That probably looked a lot cooler in the storyboard. Okay, now what? Light, are you there? I'm fine. I fell into the warehouses. Well, we obviously aren't getting here. up to the uh. Let's see. To this palace this way anymore. Start by getting out of there and quick. Something happening? I'm picking up strong chaos readings all you know, over the city. Unlike before. I can't say what'll happen. Just hurry to the palace. So now we're in this area. This area is a warehouse full of shipping containers. Who owns most of this stuff. After after a decade of Final Fantasy XIII, after ludicrous visual overdesign, after a literal decade of artists hammering away in total isolation on the most ridiculous and beautiful looking environments utterly devoid of context. After all that time in which visual design has been the only thing that this series has had going for it, it comes to a warehouse full of shipping containers. This fucking game. Look, it was Friday, they really wanted to go home. <sighs> I, 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 want, I, want to, I want to believe that it's a joke, like so many other things in this game, but it's like, ah, it's Final Fantasy XIII and it's, it's ridiculous and we're going to do this ridiculous thing where we're going to make you wander around a bunch of shipping containers because that'd be funny. The really frightening thing about this game is that I have no idea how much of the actual good parts of it were completely accidental and how much were totally deliberate. Yeah, no, I think you are giving them entirely too much credit on this one. Uh, well, the great the great thing about today's brave new post-death of the author world is that we can make these ridiculous claims, and it doesn't matter what they actually were thinking, because you can do a reading however you want. And who said criticism brought nothing to video games? So, uh, coincidentally, after Lumina destroyed our only way into the palace, she dropped us into an area that had an ID card, so that now we can just walk straight into the Augur's Quarter. What a coinkydink. Oh well, we're not getting up that way. Yeah, this particular bit of the game is uh, just a little bit contrived. Odd music, though. I mean, it's not bad, but... When you compare it to literally the entire rest of this soundtrack, it kind of stands out... in a weird, sort of dissonant way. Like, really, what is, what is it? What is with this track? Yeah, it's just, it's just kind of, uh, like a generic, like a, like a generic, like, kind of power rock thing, and it's like, that, it, it really, it doesn't fit with even the rock, even, like, the rock-style songs that are in the soundtrack. It, it doesn't feel right. You need to make an entire new aesthetic in order for that track to feel at home. Games have done that, but, you know, not this game. It's a shame. There are high points on the soundtrack. Lord, there are high points, but this is not one of them. 
Anyway, now that we've done that, we have escaped back out into here where we found the desert flame. Yeah, there is actually a point to this, sir. Like, it's one of one of the thing one of the things that I like about specifically um, Luxurian and Yusnan is that there are there are a couple of different routes around different places, and they do kind of they. It's it's a it's a game space. It's a playable space. It works. It's it's good. It's good space design. It's good good game design. This is a good game. I like this game. Anyway, Hope would uh, really like us to go continue with the uh, with the Usanon plot, but we have we have an appointment to meet with Noel tonight. So yeah, we got much more important things to do, like checking the clocks. You remember this side quest, right? I did. I wait and I looked up where the last two I was missing were. Of course you did, because the clock checking side quest is complete bullshit, and a, a lot of the clocks are in really quite astoundingly weird places. You should chase down the shadow hunter. I mean, no. We did it. We checked all the clocks. It's a good thing that now that we've checked the clocks, they're absolutely guaranteed to never ever break ever again. You. You are the opposite of informative, informative man. Who called him informative man, anyway? I have to imagine that a lot of these titles are just kind of like self-imposed. Like, yeah, I'm the informative man, and I'm the suspicious guard keep- or the suspicious gatekeeper. And Luca's not here. I don't know why. Because we're definitely- I don't think we're too late for her, but whatever. Yeah, I- I could I could have sworn it's like uh, it's maybe it may has there has there been a day transition? Yeah, yeah, because we did it on the first day, but ah well, whatever. Let's go murder Noel. <laughs>